Noogenesis is a purely mental process. The practice of a telepathic art beyond the physical or biological stages of evolution. Its foundation is a samadhi-like consciousness that is practiced on an anticipated descent of the supermind, the consciousness and power of the infinite. This heightened receptivity of this earthly state of mind becomes like a vacuum capable of attracting higher or even alien extraterrestrial intelligence. At the same time, the focus of the Samadhi is the compassionate activation of the mind of the planet, the Noosphere. This is the description and premise and purpose of Noogenesis as telepathic art. Noogenesis is birth of the Noosphere through a mental Noogenesis, a mind rebirth, while simultaneously embodying the descent of a Syrian personality, hence Syrian rebirth. This is how we incarnate or embody extraterrestrial intelligence, intelligence that has been generated outside of the planetary sphere for the purpose of activating the next stage of superhuman evolution. In this case, the intelligence being incarnate is a mind stream emanated from the Sirius Star Council of the Galactic Federation. It is from this council that the galactic Mayan codes of time have been projected. The Syrian persona is incarnated into an already existing terrestrial entity or entities who have fully prepared themselves for this eventuality. The Syrian persona is a telepathic channel open to the frequency lines of all beings. Extraterrestrial intelligence is not subject to the conditionings of the thought programs that exist on the surface of this planet. By engaging a specific program, the intention is to transcend outward thought programs and embody or incarnate a formulation of new thought and knowledge based on an extraterrestrial perspective. These higher dimensional thought templates are programmed by different sets of frequencies that are resolved through the instrument of the Synchronotron. To understand this new program, we must follow a specific process. This is where the practice of yoga comes in. The practice of yoga prepares us for the possibility of noogenesis. This comes about through the activation of prana descending and apana ascending, and the two currents, ida and pingala that cross over from the lowest chakras up to the crown chakra. These two currents or channels mirror the double helix strands of DNA. These pranic channels become potentiated forms of etheric bioelectrical currents, a blue current, Ida, and a red current, Pingala. Through the whole mind perceiver cones, these two currents cross over and become an activating form of a higher mental life, the basis of noogenesis. What we think of as reality is actually a function of frequency beams that are projected subliminally to different sections of the brain. These frequency beams register and cause certain responses that create illusory pictures of the world that we perceive as real. Noogenesis implies something born, generated, or brought about through mind. The term was coined by Pierre Taylor de Chardin, who was also co-responsible for the word and concept of the Noosphere. De Chardin described Noogenesis as a world that is being born, instead of a world that is. Within the structure of cosmic history, we define three types of genesis, radiogenesis, biogenesis, and noogenesis. Radiogenesis is the primary process of engendering life and matter programs, inclusive of the DNA program, by means of resonant frequency beams. Where did DNA come from, and how did it get here? 
the DNA arrived to this planet through high frequency projections beams from an engineering station in other dimensions. These high frequency projections are cosmic radiation beams that carry the mathematical frequency signatures of different atomic elements and life codes. This is a holographic process known as radiogenesis. These beams imprint thought forms or thought configurations upon the cosmic radiation that then activates primary forms of matter. This is how the universe comes into existence. From the projecting booths in the adjacent light universe, these mathematically structured codes are transferred into photograms or light messages that, through the process of radiogenesis, focus on a high-frequency radio wave that condenses and imprints the final forms of matter. This matter is organized as aggregates of atoms into different elemental and molecular structures. All the different signatures of the final forms of life are created through this process. This is the divine thought wave that writes the Book of Life. Once the Book of Life is established and the material forms engendered, comes the possibility for the involvement of organic states of consciousness from the highest of the inorganic states, the crystal with its 32 symmetry properties. The 64 DNA codons are a function of the binary doubling of the crystal 32. Biogenesis occurs when the cell is fertilized and undergoes mitosis or binary splitting. This splitting continues until it produces the whole cellular structure of male and female, and on it goes. This is the binary multiplication of life. Though it is assumed that all states of consciousness are dependent on organic matter to be sustained, a type of proto-consciousness exists in the atomic structure of all inorganic matter as well. The sixth order of binary doubling is 32. 1, 2, 4, 8, 16 and 32. 64 is the seventh order of binary doubling that brings the magic of life. 7 is the primary frequency of creation. Once the frequency of creation is activated by the seventh order of binary doubling, then life continues through processes of binary multiplication. It is important to study the relation of these numbers. Just as matter reaches a certain point within the binary enfoldment, becoming a crystal, so life reaches a critical point with the emergence of mind as a medium of evolving intelligence. From this mind comes the human. The human functions similarly to a crystal and has to engender its next stage of evolution, the superhuman or supermental state of consciousness. This gives the formulation of 32 to 64 and 64 to 128. Note, 32 plus 64 plus 64 plus 128 equals 288, the harmonic of polar light. This frequency represents the mind of light, essential to the telepathic art of noogenesis. As a telepathic art form, noogenesis is engendered first 
through two activating agents that represent a red negative and a blue positive bioelectrical circuit. Through a unified practice, the two agents engage the 441 telepathic grid underlying the universal matrix of creation through the electrical etheric activation of the Bula magnetic attraction force field. This is a component element first defined in the knowledge book. The Bula magnetic attraction force field refers to a particular electrotelepathic structure by which one is able to project or beam thoughts or beings to any place within the universe. This force field is a function of the 441 mathematical matrix. The Bula magnetic attraction energy grid is depicted in the Hunapku 21 matrix as a set of energy points that, when connected, create an energy grid. The Vulam circuit board shows color frequencies with their corresponding mathematical number frequencies. The Vulam has a particular structural form, similar to the images of the interdimensional star map, as well as being a focalizer of the 21 galactic archetypes. See Cosmic History Chronicles Volume 5. The first step to activate this Vulam circuit board is to imprint and visualize the structure within the body and understand how the principles of magnetic reconnection and binary crossover polarity work. Through a third transfer medium in the center of the Earth, we can create a wholly interactive psychotelepathic electromagnetic field that becomes one unified magnetic force field that connects the human biopsychic field with the terrestrial electromagnetic field. The central channel of the Vulam magnetic attraction force field corresponds to the galactic axis, with the red marker pole above and the blue darker pole below. There are seven points that correspond to the heptad gates of the central axis red crown, white root, blue third eye, red secret center, white throat, yellow solar plexus, and the green heart center. On the right side is the red current streaming down, and on the left side is the blue current in its upward flow. The Marka and Darka poles also refer to the first two light gates that enter our universe from the first light universe. The red electric current is generated from the meridian to the left of the third eye, and the blue electric current is generated from the meridian to right of secret center. The flow of the red current is from top to bottom, and the flow of the blue current is from bottom to top. These two flows directly connect the secret center with the third eye, the two minor chakras. The red flow streams out from the third eye down to the left side meridian connecting with the secret center. The blue flow streams out from the secret center and up the right side meridian connecting with the third eye. These are the two etheric binary electrical currents that are telepathically activated in order to create the Noah Genesis. Visualize and meditate on the structure until you can feel where the points are. In studying the force field, remember, it is facing you so its left hand side is to your right and vice versa. The key to the system of noogenesis is study of the three key points of the red and blue currents within the magnetic field electrical matrix. Each current has three dynamic points or centers. The two red centers are antipodes to the two blue centers and the yellow and white terminals are also antipodes. Note that the red current is to the left of the secret center and the blue current is the opposite beginning from the right of the secret center. There is a diagonal axis that goes from the red generator 288 to the blue generator 312. 
this access passes through the heart center. There is also a corresponding access from the white terminal 294 to the yellow terminal 318. In the Holman perceiver codes, 288 red generator is plus 7 and 312 blue generator is plus 21. This creates a plus 28 access, the harmonic standard, the mental reorganization of time. The 318 yellow terminal is a negative or sublimated 7, and 294 white terminal is a sublimated minus 21, creating a sublimated 28 axis. Therefore, the plus 28 axis and minus 28 axis zero out in a perfect harmonic equipoise. Also note that the 28 currents connect the four hyperplasmic zones in the following way. 288 plus 7 is a beta alpha plasma. 312 plus 21 is an alpha beta plasma. This makes a plus 28 beta alpha alpha beta current, which is a dynamizing generator circuit. 294 minus 21 alpha alpha terminal 318 minus 7 beta beta terminal this makes a sublimating minus 28 alpha alpha beta beta current which is a stabilizing terminal circuit the plus 28 activating pulse between the red and blue generators is the frequency of the 28 day moon cycle the harmonic standard the 4 is to 7, 4 times 7 equals 28, part of the elemental formulation 4 is to 7, what 7 is to 13. The position 288 is the frequency of the polar harmonic, 144 times 2, and corresponds in the synchronic matrix to kin 185, red electric serpent. Kin 185 is the activator of the red life force galactic spectrum making it the perfect red generator. In the Vulo Magnetic Attraction Force Field, between the red generator 288 and white blue circuit terminal 294, there is a blue center that is also one of the seven Hunap Ku 21 heptad gates. See Chapter 5, Second Heptad Gate. This blue center frequency, 291, corresponds with radial plasma celli, the root chakra. The white at the bottom of the central axis, 144, corresponds with radial plasma gamma, the third eye chakra in the heptad gate codes. In the Vulum force field, the heptad arrangement corresponds to the bodily alignment of the chakras, i.e., the lowest gate is the root chakra, hence 144 is at the root chakra, coded by radial plasma celli. In the Vulum force field, the blue 291 is located in the third eye chakra and corresponds to the radial plasma gamma. Here there is a crossover just as there is a crossover with the yellow and white. The actual matrix of transformation is located between the third eye, blue 291, and secret center, red 315. These two centers create a crossover polarity of frequencies and colors between them. This entire structure can be visualized and imprinted. In the visualization of this structure, we see two sets of governing points, three points on each side, defining the red and blue circuits. The activation occurs between the third eye and secret sensor chakras. From the blue occult terminal, white 294, a blue current beams to the blue third eye, while the red generator sends a red current to the third eye. From the third eye center, blue 291, 
One current ascends to the crown chakra and the other descends through the central channel. The same thing occurs with the secret center, where the blue generator sends a blue current to the secret center 315, while from the red terminal, yellow 318, a red current goes to the secret center. From the secret center, one current shoots down to the south dark pole and the other is absorbed into the central channel. In traditional yoga, the prana descends. This corresponds to the red electrical current descending from the third eye, while the opposing wind, apana, ascends. This corresponds to the blue electrical current ascending from the secret chakra. The whole central matrix is another plane of activation. The center between the throat chakra 402 and solar plexus 414 defines what in the 441 matrix is in the ninth time dimension, inner time. Inner time is circumscribed by the hyperelectrical current identified in the eighth circuit. The throat chakra holds the hyperneutron and the solar plexus holds the hyperelectron. These are key primary partons that establish the electrical field. This is visualized in our central matrix. Note, these again trade places in the heptad gate rendition, where 402 is the solar plexus chakra and 414 is the throat chakra. In the volume force field, this is reversed, where instead of a radial juxtaposition of plasmas and centers, it is a straightforward descent from the top of the crown, 108, to the bottom of the root, 144. Noogenesis can only become real when we imprint this structure into our minds and keep it projected in our bodily zone. Through systematic discipline, this program becomes a living visualization. Perpendicular to the central axis running through the heart center is the gravitational axis. The central channel is the energy activation axis, which is balanced by the gravitational axis. Everything is a matter of balancing. To summarize, there is a red electrical current descending and a blue electrical current ascending. They each have their two diagonal electrical lines of force, the 28 unit positive activating axis and the 28 unit negative sublimating axis. These two axes connect the two terminals. There are two generators and two terminals that run the lines of force through the heart center. This is also the center of the 441, the Sirius B52 element 113, point that connects the hyperneutron and hyperelectron. Between the red generator and red catalyzer lies the hyperparton kum, the heat of inner light. Between the red catalyzer and the red terminal lies chemio, the light of inner heat. These are two secondary complex partons intended to be telepathically activated within this structure holding together our etheric body. The blue current contains the two primary partons, the Dumkuali primary heat between the terminal and catalyzer, and the Dumduar primary light between the generator and catalyzer. These hyperpartons are activated by the currents. In other words, the red current activates the heat of inner light, which catalyzes to activate the light of inner heat. The blue current activates the primary light cell, which catalyzes to activate the primary heat cell. This highly charged electrical activity is an entire circuit, the eighth circuit of the 441 matrix, which creates a whole electrotelepathic cell within both our corpus callosum and our etheric body. Remember, in telepathically imprinting these structures, you are actually creating an etheric engraving. 
The exact precision of the engraving then activates or is activated by the same force field in the AA Midway Station. See Chapter 13. It is like activating a credit card. By punching in the precise numbers of the credit card into the phone, the credit card gets activated. This same principle applies to the Vulum force field of 441. There are two key factors to consider in the noogenesis. 1. Magnetic reconnection. Principle of polar lines of force joining at positive end of bipolar field. 2. Binary crossover polarity equalizes both sides of the two magnetic fields. The magnetic fields then become pressed together with a third transfer medium in the center. The telepathic visualization of the Earth with the same matrix bisecting it. However, in the Earth these are two Vulum fields back to back. Each corresponds to what either of the agents would be facing. These two fields balance and strengthen the Earth axis with a powerful neutralizing force. The Vulum magnetic force field can be projected in three ways. 1. Visualize it as a holographic structure bisecting your body. 2. Visualize it as a nano chip that you place in your corpus callosum. 3. Visualize it as a structure that bisects Earth from pole to pole. This practice requires two people facing each other with the matrix between them. One assumes the role of the red agent and the other the blue agent. They simultaneously visualize Earth in the same matrix bisecting the planet. In the red agent, the red Fulham field is more activated, while the blue is more activated in the blue agent. The red agent visualizes and projects an active electrical red force from the left side of the body to the latent red side of the blue agent's body. In turn, the blue agent projects an active electrical blue force from the red side of the body to the latent blue side of the red agent's body. This creates a binary crossover polarity. Continue to refine and practice the visualization and crossover polarity until a palpable current can be felt coming from left to right, right to left at third eye and secret center levels. The energy transfer should be felt as an internal sensation. The object of this practice is to become telepathically focused and merged in one field, so that it is felt throughout the etheric and neural circuitry. This is how to create a highly charged electrical field to synchronize and by psychotelepathic transfer activate the Earth's magnetic field, engendering the noogenesis. This practice, when properly done, activates the volume magnetic attraction force field of the Earth, which is held in a telepathic visualization in the center between the two agents. When their magnetic fields are completely pressed together, they experience a magnetic reconnection. A current leaps around them like a rainbow current, from red above and from blue below connecting and merging the fragmented parts of the field into one whole field. This magnetic reconnection comes about by means of binary crossover polarity through the transfer medium of the Earth which is visualized between them. This triggers the noogenesis, the circumpolar rainbow bridge around the Earth. Atmospheric physicists say that a thunderstorm can occur in one part of the world and set off other thunderstorms in faraway places. For example, imagine a thunderstorm in Turkey that emits energetic electrons into the field that interact with plasma waves at a certain point and create high energy bursts that send free electrons down somewhere, say in Madagascar in the southern hemisphere and trigger a thunderstorm there. This is the principle of magnetic reconnection. 
the noogenesis practice works with the same principle. We have a red pole and blue pole as well as two terminals creating a binary crossover polarity. If we transmit activating telepathic electrons at a high speed into the merged auric fields, they will then create high bursts of energy within the merged field. This in turn creates a high level of activation within the agents allowing them to mentally transfer this energy into the earth. The energy of this telepathic activation is sent out through the poles and meets to create the great bursts, gamma bursts, that trigger the rainbow branch. This is the scientific principle to create the noogenesis. In this experiment of noogenesis, it is important that we understand the telepathic frequency indices of the numbers involved. For instance, the heat of inner light frequency is 399, 19 times 21, and the light of inner heat frequency is 393, 131 times 3. Meditate on the meaning of the numbers. Create a magnetic reconnection through binary crossover polarity. Note, 399 plus 393 equals 792, 396 times 2. 396 is the red catalyzer between them. First, an interpsychic field between the two agents must be created and then transferred as an activated magnetically reconnected force field into the Earth. Everything, the Earth, Self and Other, are visualized within the Vulum force field. This process engenders an activation of primary creation matrices. Secondary aspects to understand within the process are the primary creation matrices, namely the fifth force matrix of the four radial time dimensions plus the inner ninth time dimension. This is the most fundamental matrix from which the matrix of nine is evolved. Meditate to understand that the Volum force field and Hunapku 21 both take place completely within the radial time dimensions. The outer times are not included in the actual points that occur within the 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th and 9th time dimensions. We are dealing with a structure that is not subject to the 3D time or the 4 outer time dimensions. However, the four outer time dimensions are connected by the fact that the blue and red generator are on the same circuit, the fifth, and this runs through all four outer time dimensions and all four radial time dimensions. The first seven circuits connect the four outer time dimensions with the four radial time dimensions. The 288, third eye, and 312 secret center are both on the fifth circuit. These points on the circuit connect with outer time, but the inner volume force field Hunapku 21, structure radial and self-contained in the ninth or inner time. Understand these underlying matrices and how they have appeared. This is somewhat similar to Buddhist meditation practices like the Vajra world mandala. We can see in the 441 time matrix the fifth force structure of the radial time dimensions. This fifth force matrix, four radial times and inner time, corresponds to the five dream spell castles, while the 13 moon calendar is accounted for by the four outer time dimensions. There are three circuits that are activated. 1. The second circuit which activates the poles, red pole 108, 
and white ball 144. 2. The fifth circuit, which is the main action that takes place, the third eye, the red generator and the blue terminal, the secret center, the blue generator and the red terminal. These are all in the fifth circuit. 3. The eighth circuit, which is in the ninth inner time dimension. This is the hyperparton electrical circuit. Look at the grid according to the planets. The red circuit activates small deck Uranus and completes itself on Earth. The blue circuit activates Venus, Pluto and completes itself in Mars. The central circuit is Neptune, Earth, Neptune, Galactic Core, Pluto, Mars and Uranus. These are the basic points of study in terms of generating the Noah Genesis. When you draw these circuits on the 441 synchronic matrix, BMU-288 is equivalent to KIN-185, initiator of the red galactic spectrum. In the 441 space matrix psi genetic map, BMU-288 is equivalent to KIN-79, frequency of the noosphere constant. KIN-185 is the generator 288 that activates the noosphere 79, all in the same BMU-288, the harmonic of polar light. BMU-312 coincides with the KIN-76 synchronic matrix and KIN-174 psi-genetic matrix, the cosmic history generator. The axis between the blue and red generators is the axis that connects the noosphere constant 79 with 174, the white overtone wizard of cosmic history. There is a lot to study in the grid that connects all these points. When we map this purely on the 260 unit Zolkin grid, we see that the whole of the Hunapku 21 matrix occurs within the Tzolkin on the synchronic matrix, except on the two extreme points of the gravitational axis. The red dragon occurs at the North Pole represented by Kin 122, and the white wind occurs at the South Pole represented by Kin 139. The remaining Hunapku 21 points are on the Serpent, Star, Skywalker and Warrior axis. Then finally we have the Holomine Perceiver Grid. The very process of noogenesis is superhuman superconscious activation. At the conclusion of this program, the conditioned charges of the terrestrial thought field of agents undertaking the experiment should be cleared out and an inner vision vacuum created for the descent of an extraterrestrial metaconsciousness thought field, the Syrian thought matrix, Syrian rebirth. This in essence is the how-to of the telepathic art of noogenesis.